Hey guys, it's Kevin Shaw, Editor-in-Chief of the Watercraft Journal, and in this episode of Uncut, we're delivering on the request of so many of you who were in this last Sunday's chat during our live session that we record every Sunday night. And we are showing you a totally uncut, almost 12-minute segment of footage that I collected during the fall mud bug. For those of you who don't know what the mud bug is at all, it started almost 15, 16 years ago as a bit of a clandestine drag race session that was held in the bayous of Morgan City, Louisiana. In between those drag races, guys would take off and shoot the bayou and go up these really narrow trails and just see some beautiful, unspoiled patches of nature. Well, that is what's remained over the years, and now you get hundreds of enthusiasts who come in and splinter off into small groups and go on these really exciting rides. And I'm excited to say that in the 10 years that I've been going, I have always brought one of my daughters with me. This time around, I've got my eight-year-old Natalie on the back of a 2022 Kawasaki Ultra 310LX, which we had for a short amount of time on loan from Kawasaki so that we could take it here to the Mudbug and put it up in a head-to-head -head comparison between it and the 2022 Sea-Doo GTX Limited 300. Although this is our longer video, I'm not going to talk over all of the A-roll. I really want you guys to be able to hear everything, especially the whine of that supercharger, as I got into the mix with Brad Burney and David Pate. And I had paired up with Greg Gaddis, the son of Jerry Gaddis, the founder of Green Hulk, who now runs the Green Hulk Garage YouTube channel. Greg and I spent a good portion of the weekend testing out his 89 mile an hour RXPX 300, as well as performing our shootout duties, which you'll see a full video on here on the Watercraft Journal YouTube channel in the coming weeks. But I guess for right now, this clip requires a little bit of explanation, especially for you guys who weren't in Sunday's session. So what had happened was Saturday morning, I jumped on the Kawasaki with Natalie, and Greg was on the sea -Doo, and we were able to join up with Jason Allen in his group. We had about 20 to 25 skis with us, and many of them were doubled up. But Natalie and I decided to jump in with the mix of some of the faster skis, and try to run a really narrow trail with a bone stock 310 horsepower Kawasaki. Now, I have a little bit of racing experience. I was not a national champion by any means. I was actually an offshore racer and a pretty moderate one at that. So I am definitely not tooting my own horn. But I do know how the Kawasaki likes to handle in rough water, and I've got a lot of seat time on this hull, even with the new design. So I felt pretty confident jumping in and getting into the mix with some pretty good riders.
So we started getting on the throttle and passing each other in the wide turns and getting in each other's wash just to have a little bit of fun. Now this definitely chewed up the water behind us and some of those people who were on a uh, little less than aggressive handling machines weren't too happy with us to say the least. But we were all smiles when we came shooting out of the end of the trail into the wider river. In fact, we were laughing the entire time as you can see on the smile on my face. As for my initial impressions on the Ultra, it's really grown on me and while some of the changes just landed a little flat and we've been pretty critical of those in our reviews, when it came to actual seat time and just enjoying this machine for what it was, it really was a very big leap forward for the Ultra platform. Yes, they're keeping the hull pretty much exactly as is. The hull's not broken, there's no reason to fix it. But the big changes to the Ultra include a very lower center of gravity, and this is done by dropping the footwells and the rider's position down deeper into the ski itself. And this allows the hull to really maneuver very tightly, especially for a machine that weighs 1,089 pounds. It really does get out of its own way. It's got enough low and grunt to really pull ahead. And surprising to a lot of people, if you trim it down and get on the throttle, it will carve a corner. I had already passed up a pair of less than aggressive riding RXPXs and got in with a FX SVHO that had been modded to near 80 miles an hour. And of course, David on his red and white GP 1800R. Now, he wasn't going to let me buy by any means, and he was going to make me work for it, which I was all more than happy to do, and to do so with an 8-year-old hanging on to the back. She's definitely a trooper, and held on harder than a lot of these guys who call themselves seasoned pros, not to rub their noses in it too much. I think it might bear noting a little bit about Mudbug, just for you guys who want to go, who don't really know how it's structured or how the event goes at all. And here's the catch, there's no structure. My first time going was kind of a rude awakening. I pretty much sat on my butt the whole time because I didn't know anyone and I didn't know where we were going or who was going where. And so really Saturday was kind of a bust for me. And I was really sad about it because it was my first time going and I had my oldest daughter who was five at the time. And I thought I'd made a really critical mistake by bringing a kid and I wasn't interested in going to the bars and so I felt really left out. I had gone to the forum that night and thankfully some really great people had reached out and said, hey listen, if you're going to be here tomorrow, which was going to be Sunday, why don't you join us? We got a small group going and we're going to go shoot the trails and hit the sandbar and have a good time. And that one ride introduced me to some of the best people who, quite frankly, got me going every year to Mudbug. And so for the novice or the first timer, there is no actual structure. It is very, very loose. In fact, the safest play is to hang out at the gas station at Dorian's Landing around 8.30, 9 o'clock and just see where everyone's going. You can use that opportunity to fuel up, to get some ice for your cooler, get some drinks, and then you get to hobnob and rub elbows with some really cool people and just see where everyone's planning on going. Again, it is a lot of people who are going out riding and they typically end up fracturing into smaller, more manageable groups. So for the most part, if you're curious about going with one particular person or if you want to ride with other sea or other Cowies or other Yamahas, you can use this opportunity to be a little bit more selective if you so choose. Uh, I really recommend for the new guy, if you're not on the GreenHulk.net forum, definitely go and check it out. Go to the event section and go check out the Mudbug Rally. But if you're not there, you can also go to Facebook. There is the Facebook group to go check it out at GreenHulk.net. Or if you do know the dates and you just don't know when people are meeting up, that's when you hang out at Dorian's and see who pulls into the gas station. You'll probably see me with a kid and a brand new ski. You're going to see some really great people that you might also recognize, and you'll be able to have a really, really good time. That's really been the rule of thumb. It's a little bit loose. It's a little disorganized, but that's kind of how they want to do it. And I know for a fact that Greg has really cool plans for the future for those top-end drag race guys and for just the performance enthusiast that might really transform how Mudbug is handled in the future. 
but for the most part you're still going to be able to enjoy these kinds of rides you're still going to be able to count alligators and blow underneath trees and have spanish moss hit you in the face and just have a total total blast i mean again i got a smile stretched across my face and it's been almost two weeks since i've been home guys honestly if you haven't been you gotta go to Mudbug. now like i said it happens three times a year the main event is typically the second weekend in June. It's a little bit hotter, it's a little bit more humid, but that's when you see the really big body count. There is a spring mud bug and there is a fall mud bug. I really do prefer the fall mud bug when it comes to weather. We had absolutely amazing weather. It was never too hot. It was nice and breezy. The weather was great. We didn't have any rain. It just was a treat. Besides the water level being a little low this year, and I think that's really primarily due to the hurricane, we were really stoked to have just an awesome weekend of riding. So again, if you haven't gone, guys, I really recommend you put this on your schedule. They're all crazy. That was rad. I had so much fun freaking skirting you. Yeah.